Hey there team, Geology Professor Sean Wilsey with you here. Today is Saturday, August 30th, and there was an interesting earthquake in North Central Nevada that I thought we would discuss. And so this was about magnitude five, and it occurred right around noon today, again on Saturday, August 30th, in this part of North Central Nevada, an area that's not super common when it comes to earthquakes. And I dove into this a little bit and wanted to share with you just why we saw earthquakes in this area and just what's going on a bit geologically. But let's start with the earthquake itself. It had a depth of about six kilometers. That's about uh, almost four miles in terms of depth. Uh, you can see Interstate 80 here coming across Nevada. Here's Winnemucca. Here's the town of Battle Mountain down here. So it's more or less due north of Battle Mountain uh, in an area known for mining more than anything. So again, no reports of fatalities or injuries or any damage that we know of at this point and probably not expected to see anything super extensive given the size of this earthquake big enough to be felt of course not necessarily big enough to have produced strong shaking so you can see the cluster of quakes here there's the main shock there the 5.0 and then the distribution of aftershocks here just maybe a dozen or so aftershocks in the area since this earthquake occurred a few hours ago so let's go ahead and check out this earthquake in a little bit more detail, um, let's look at first the, the beach ball, the moment tensor solution for this earthquake shows that this earthquake occurred on a northeast-southwest trending fault. So we're looking for a fault that has this northeast-southwest orientation uh, with this open region here in the middle, the white region. This tells us it was a normal fault and it was either a northwest dipping normal fault or a southeast dipping normal fault. Um, but nonetheless, normal faults are caused by extension, rocks being pulled apart, and we can clearly see the orientation of the fault based on the beach ball there. Um, as you would expect in this part of Nevada, not a whole lot of reports of it being felt. Looks like so far maybe 43 responses on the USGS site of people in Elko, Winnemucca, Battle Mountain, some of the small little communities there in north central Nevada. So a couple folks feeling it there, of course. Um, and again, not expecting anything significant to come of this earthquake in terms of damage, at least at this point. Um, so the big question would be why? Like, why did we see this earthquake? Well, this part of Nevada is pretty complicated uh, geologically. It's, it's sort of got a lot of things going on. It had an early history of sediments being deposited in, in the Paleozoic, you know, hundreds of millions of years ago. Then there were several uh, mountain building events, what we call orogenies, where rocks were thrust to the east that formed folds, they formed faults. Those became pathways for um, fluids to move through later on. And this is one of the reasons why Nevada is such a prosperous mining state, is there's a lot of structures um, that helped those uh, fluids move through those pathways and then concentrate those ore bodies. And then later in the Cenozoic, during the last maybe 50, 60 million years, we have lots of magmatism. There was a lot of volcanic eruptions taking place, but also subsurface magma activity that again was the heat source that add, added the fluids and allowed some of those um, ore bodies to form at that time. So a pretty complicated area. And this again is why Nevada is such a prolific area. Let's look at the USGS fault map. Um, so when we look at the map of faults for this area, let's specifically look for this location here. So here again, Winnemucca over here, here's Battle Mountain. And the area of our earthquake is right up here, a little tiny town called Midas. Uh, there's a, a mine up there. And if I overlaid the after or the epicenter of the earthquake, it's right about here, right in this area here. And notice we have several in this region. A lot of the faults are indeed trending along this northeast southwest direction so that matches pretty nicely with the beach ball orientation we see here that northeast southwest orientation matches up really nicely so without knowing anything else you know very likely to have occurred on one of these faults here um, when you click on it it calls it the midas trough fault zone so this all triggered with me anyway just you know going down the rabbit hole of learning a little bit more about the geology of this area, which I want to share with you. And again, this is a pretty deep, pretty quick uh, dive, not really a deep dive per se, but you know, spent half an hour or so reading some papers, reviewing some things and trying to understand what was going on in this part of Northern Nevada. So you can see those faults there trending in that direction. So that would presume to be the reason why we had an earthquake there today. We do have faults still in the region. 
And all of this led me to looking a little bit at the seismic hazards for Nevada and just, well, hey, is this like, is this a place where we've seen earthquakes in the past or not? And so here you can see the seismic hazard map. Um, well, this just shows, sorry, this is the historic earthquake map of Nevada and Eastern California. So you can see all the dots are different earthquakes of different magnitudes. The biggest ones in red are above magnitude seven, a little smaller, six to seven magnitude and so on. But the area we're looking at here really hasn't seen a lot of earthquake activity in the past. It's right about in here. So it looks like we've had a couple little yellow dots, fours and fives, which is kind of on par with what we saw today. So I suppose they'll add at least one more dot there for this event today, but not nearly as prolific as some other zones of the state. Uh, when we come down here to the seismic hazard map for Nevada, or just showing this part of California and Nevada, we can see, and it's hard to tell exactly where we're at, but it's kind of just below the Oregon-Idaho border, kind of right in this area here. And you can start to see a couple of those northeast, southwest trending faults right there. So not the highest hazard, seismic hazard zone uh, in the state, not the place where you'd expect the next earthquake to be in Nevada, but an area that's nonetheless, you know, on the radar, places where we've seen earthquakes in the past, there's known and mapped faults in the area. So maybe a place where we would expect those earthquakes to occur. But this got me looking at a paper and learning a little bit more about what, you know, what is this Midas trough thing? And, and in learning about this a little bit, I learned a little bit about this region of North Central Nevada called uh, the Northern Nevada Rift, the NNR. So this is a region of extension. It's really more of a, um, a magnetic anomaly, a positive mag magnetic anomaly, along with some surface geology evidence that, that corresponds to that as well. But it appears to be a zone where there's been extension, so stretching of the Earth's crust in pretty much a you know north, uh, north, east, southwest direction, or almost east-west direction. And it seems to have been most active between about 16 and a half to about 15 million years ago. It's, it's a pretty long zone. It extends up into Oregon. Um, there's some speculation that maybe the Western Snake River Plain, which is a structural feature here where Boise sits, that this is maybe connected to a part of that because it's sort of on the same trend as that. Um, so this is kind of what you can see here. And then this was interesting here, looking at uh, the map of this. Let me make that a little bit smaller. There we go. So here's the uh, Midas right here. And so our earthquake occurred somewhere in this region, just to the south of it in this area. And you can see with these black dashed lines, these big prominent lines here, this is this Northern Nevada rift zone. You can also see with the little mining symbols that a lot of the modern ore deposits and mines in the region uh, coincide pretty nicely with this feature. So it seems to be a, a pretty large structural feature, uh, a trend as they would say in the, in the mining business where we see a lot of these economic deposits. So it probably had a lot of heat flow. There are some mafic dikes, so some dikes in the area in addition to these faults. And uh, you can see some of these other faults cutting across it here. You can actually see uh, just near Midas here, got some of these northeast, southwest trending faults cutting across the main trend of this rift zone here. So kind of interesting stuff. Um, you know, it helped me learn a little bit more about this area. I think I'd heard a few times about the Northern Nevada Rift, but really didn't know much about it. Looks like this is cutting mostly, most of the surface rocks in this area are mostly volcanic rocks. Um, the volcanic rocks of rhyolites, maybe some basalts, usually that bimodal volcanism is what you see in some of these places. So an interesting earthquake, um, you know, again, not expecting a, a lot of aftershocks here, but you know, a nice magnitude five with some interesting geology and some interesting uh, information to share with you. So hopefully that was something of interest to you. And if there's something else that pops up of interest, I will be sure to share that with you. So thanks again for your time, for your support of the channel. Please hit like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.